there's something very unsettling about the way this guy is smiling at me. All right, the dwarf faction is out. We have new characters in the game. There's 10 new characters. I did acquire one of them, but we're going to go through all of the characters today, talk about which ones I like, which ones I don't like, and strap in because, uh, well, you'll see. Okay, so the Mountain King's the legendary. We're going to start with him. Uh, he probably cosmetically is my favorite looking out of all of them. I think he looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, he is a legendary, so you would expect it. Plus the back, can I say the background? with the dwarves where there's like the chest and the gold everywhere and the amazing pillars and the fire like it, it a, amazing i i think the art guys on this game neither neither raise the art is fantastic in this game in my opinion i'm a huge fan of that or all they did was just take a camera into their office and take a picture and this is really just their you know this is their break room here considering how much money they probably make from all of our openings okay let's talk kit so the basic attack is fantastic look at this attacks one enemy that is a legendary status basic attack uh unfortunately yeah lackluster uh it could be better it could have some kind of status effect or something attached to it but unfortunately it's just an attack one enemy and typically when you see legendary characters you want them to have something really good associated with their basic attack now you can see where they're going with this as we continue with the kit however now the second move is attacks one enemy again and ignores 50 percent of the target's defense and it's important to know that both of these scale off of attack okay and if you look at it it's just plus damage plus damage plus damage there's there's nothing else there because there's nothing to give them and then it's just plus damage plus damage plus damage and then level five cooldown by one okay which it goes from six turns to five which is still a long cooldown uh, especially for something that all it does is ignore 50 percent of the target's defense so that's kind of unfortunate now his third move is attacks one enemy again based upon attack again and ignores shield and block damage buffs now uh, that is actually useful you can you know, make sure you can kill somebody but again the turn is six turns and it goes down to five i mean that's that means you use one of your abilities, use the other one, and then for three or four turns, you're you're literally only just punching people because that's all his move does. Now look at the look at the passive, okay? Increases this champion's attack by twenty percent each time this champion kills an enemy. Stacks up to forty percent, resets each round. Meaning that if you do dragon and you kill two enemies in the first round, you go into round two, it's back down. You don't have the bonus again, okay? So this bonus is only effective. When this guy kills two people per round, meaning if there's like five enemies in most dungeons in a round, he has to get the the final blow on two of them and then only have that bonus damage for the three remaining. And by then, the, some of the other ones are probably dead already. So in my opinion, this champion, while it is a 10 out of 10 for graphic looks, cool design, amazing weapon, love the horns, art guys, you nailed it, okay? I'm sure the animations probably look good too, I have faith for it. The kit design is really bad. This is not a good character, unfortunately, because he looks so good. If you pull him, you want to use him. This is not a good kit, okay? So right off the bat, unfortunately, legendary, meh. Okay, so here's my personal favorite dwarf. Uh, he has three good debuff and buff reliant moves. Now, if you look here, it's a 35% chance of placing 100% heal reduction debuff for two turns just on this basic attack. Now, it's a singular hit, so it's not a multi-hit, so he's not going to be doing tons and tons of damage through, like, Giant Slayer or anything, but 100% heal reduction is pretty useful across the board uh, and can be bumped up to 50% chance on basic. Now, if you look here, this is probably his best move. It places a block debuff a buff on all allies for one turn and a 60% increased defense buff on all allies for two turns and when booked it goes all the way down to three turns and it only takes two books it's really easy to book this uh, so for that reason if you pull this character especially if you're like a newer player and stubble drops right now for dwarves and you pull him that move right there helps a ton for getting gear from dragon if you're having trouble in dragon because it's going to block all of the debuffs coming from the dragon as well as getting you tankier. This is a pretty good character for PvE if you're struggling um, or just in general. I think it's a pretty good a pretty good move. Now, his third move is not bad either. It attacks all enemies and when booked is 100% chance and has uh, a 50% decrease attack debuff on all enemies for two turns associated with that hit. So he AoEs. Everyone gets decreased attack debuff, the good version of decreased attack. He also decreases each target's max HP by 30% of the damage inflicted. However, uh, I don't really think that matters. Personally, I think that uh, that mechanic is not really useful in a lot of places I've seen. Uh, but it's nice just to have that tacked on. The real win here is the AoE attack down 
paired with a AOE defense up and a block up debuffs and he also has healing reduction so this guy right here is a really efficient guy to build because he has very many variety of useful buffs and debuffs across the board and he's going to be able to be used in a variety of dungeons he has a lot of things paired like i don't think i've seen healing reduction paired with uh debuffs uh, block with the 60% decrease and you also have a decrease attack I think he's the first one that's got all of that and he's also a defense based champion meaning that his moves do damage based upon defense so you can build him tanky and he also does additional damage if you pull this guy I think you can invest in him and not have any of any of your resources wasted plus he's one of the cooler looking characters in my opinion he has maybe the best uh overall armor style is what i would say I, I really like it i can't tell if it's like aztec is that supposed to be almost like aztec style armor or is it more uh it, almost like totem native american it's hard for me to tell um maybe aztec okay now this character uh, is hard to read potentially this guy could be like a huge problem if you look look at this attack here it's based upon defense. Based upon defense is really nice because you can build him tanky and do damage, okay? But look at the way it works. It's based upon defense, and then every time he attacks, he stacks his defense by 4% each time his skill is used, right? And, or that skill is used. And stacks up to 20%. So if he basically attacks five times, there you go. He has 20% increased defense. So that's pretty cool, okay? And the damage is based upon defense, so it's also increasing his damage as it goes. But here's where it pairs nicely. When booked... Three turn cooldown, 100% chance to play him provoke debuff on all enemies. Now, if you don't know what provoke does, it means where they have to attack you, and when they attack you, they're going to use your basic attack. They skip that turn and just basic attack you, okay? It's almost like a silence in a way. So that move is very, very useful um, if you're extremely tanky and can make people just basic attack you, and you have counter attack, he's going to be attacking back, which is also increasing his defense, which is also increasing his damage. Amazing, okay? Now look at this passive. Uh, when booked, it is a 50% chance of decreasing damage inflicted on this champion by 50% each time this champion is attacked. So it's a 50-50, right? 50% chance and then reduces damage by 50%. I think the math would end up being like 25% overall damage, but, you know, reduced in gem robe. I'm not sure if that's how the math would work out or not. But then look at this. He has ally defense and ring by 30%. Now, it's not Tomb Lord. It's not 42%, um, but that's good as well. So... What that means is if you stack this guy with a ton of defense in arena, provoke everyone, they attack him, he counterattacks back and slowly knocks down everybody, increases his defense, and then he's kind of tanky because of this passive plus the fact you're building him defense just to do more damage anyway. So he's got an interesting kit. He could potentially be very strong. We'll have to see. Okay, now we get into the rares. Um, unfortunately, the rares are not very good. Uh, this is what's kind of stopping me from really welling out and trying to post some dwarves. Uh, unfortunately, the really the good one I've already showed you, which is Grizzled, and he is an epic, okay? Uh, the other ones, this is where they start getting quite bad. Now, if you look here at Grumbler, um, he places a shield buff equal to 10% of his max HP on himself for two turns. That's not a very hot basic attack. And then he has the weaker form of heal reduction uh, for two turns. That's not good either. And then he has the weaker form of increased defense buff. And he has, you know, weak ally protection buff as well. Uh, again, not so hot. So this character is probably not that usable unless you're like a very early game player and you happen to pull him and, you know, he has some decent some decent buff and debuff moves here that can be used early in the game okay then you have beast wrestler now his passive is kind of interesting it increases damage inflicted 50 percent for the first heat hit on each enemy meaning either skill okay so then his first skill is basic attack as he attacks two times 20 percent chance of placing a stun okay that's like meh and then his second move is is kind of interesting because enemies killed by the skill cannot be revived how However, I have very rarely been able to make that do something meaningful, meaning I have three macabs, okay? So I got plenty of characters that can stop reviving, and I have yet to really have it contribute to something on my account. Um, now, you can pair this with, you know, the first hit, and, the, you know, right off the bat, pop somebody maybe, and they can't be revived. That could be cool, I guess. And this aura is crit rate in arena, so maybe they're trying to make it, like, a counter the Gorgorab or something. I don't know. I don't find him particularly impressive. And then if you go to Honor Guard here, kind of a reskin of the first guy, Grumbler. Here's where it really starts to get bad. I mean, decreased accuracy is not really something you want. I mean, it, it, obviously, it's good to have it. It's better to have it than not have it, right? But... I would rather have this than just a basic attack, but it, it's so bad that it, it's not, it's almost 
the same as not having it. And then if you look here, this is a decent move, which is 50% chance of stealing two random buffs from the target. It uh, goes up to 75% chance when booked. So if you're a new player, once again, and you're working on the Magic Keep and struggling there, that can be used. And then this one, again, is good for the Magic Keep too, because you have 100% chance when booked of placing a block buffs debuff, uh, which will help you, you know, Magic Keep. Uh, other than that, uh, not not terribly impressed with this guy either. And he has a force ally defense in all battles. So it's it's... It's not so great. They're force to force, and I don't really think that yeah, that's particularly amazing. And then Master Butcher is the one rare that uh, I do quite like. I haven't pulled him, but if I do pull him, I'm going to try using him. Now, his basic attack uh, is Provoke debuff and only 30% chance, so low chance, singular attack, not a horribly impressive basic attack. Uh, the second move is, isn't too great either. It places a Provoke on somebody else, uh, but the reason they have the Provoke chance in here is for his passive which we'll show you but and then he has like a weak form of increased crit rate and attack so he's like a mild support and then you look here this is the one reason i find him quite interesting you can get this cooldown to one so it can proc one time between his turns and when he's attacked he heals all allies equal to the amount of damage taken so if you stack him with pure hp but no defense let's say he has like sixty thousand health but has as low as defense as you can get him with just mass HP so he still can survive. And he's eating huge like 30k crits at a time. He'll he'll be healing all of these huge number of crits to everybody. You pair that with somebody like Ironclad who does damage based upon being healed. And you have a passive form of healing and damage. So I think that there's some interesting combos that could happen. Um, but it's I think it's kind of a cheese thing more than it is something that you know is vital to a kit. And then you look at this, it's another kind of cheese thing. Revi revives a random ally with full HP when this champion is killed. There could be something kind of funny that you could do with this. Um, with like a Gorgo Rab that revives everybody. And then there's maybe a loop or something. I'm sure there's some way of making this work. Maybe pair it with someone like Kaimar. Who then reduces like the cooldown. So you have him reviving somebody who's like Kaimar. Who then resets the cooldown. I, I don't know. There could be some funny stuff you could do. So he is an interesting character. Okay. Now there's one other rare. And that's the Void Rare. And he is, he's got some cool stuff and he's got some bummer stuff. Now, the bummer stuff is that he does have a two hit on basic, which is nicer than a singular hit that a lot of these dwarves have. But he has a chance of placing the, the lower version of weaken, the 15% version of weaken debuff. You want the higher one, the 25% version of weaken. Because the 15% version of weaken is going to take up another spawn, the clan boss, if you use him there. And that's where you would really want the weaken or, you know, in the dragon or something. But it's going to take up a debuff spot there. And you really just want the higher version of weaken. There's not, there's not much use for lower forms of of buffs and debuffs okay you really want the higher end one because it's like double the stats for the most part so for this is kind of like a meh a meh thing okay and then the second attack has a chance of placing an hp burn books up to 100 percent three turn cooldown places it for two turns kind of decent uh decent but that's it now this move is very interesting because it doesn't have a cooldown when attacked has a 30 percent chance of extending the duration of all debuffs on the attacker by one turn Meaning, if someone attacks you, let's say they go, they punch you, um, it procs that 30% chance. Now all the poisons on them are on them for one turn longer. This can be very interesting if you have that chance, plus then you have someone like Warlord extending it. When he attacks, you could basically keep buffs on somebody 100% of the time. So there might be some use for that with him there. But what we don't know is if it's per hit meaning if it's a clan boss you know he does his double slammer like he'll shock you afterwards and that's two separate hits does that count where it tries twice with this passive because if you could potentially proc the durations twice just from getting hit on one turn that could be very good we don't know that yet um but if that's the way it works he'll be very good otherwise he's just kind of okay and then increases ally defense in all battles ally defense in all battles always has a use somewhere so that's kind of where the rares stop now we kind of move on to the uncommons and this is where they get even worse 10 percent chance of placing and provoke 25 percent chance of placing and provoke it gets nearly useless decreases the cooldown of cut apart and then cut apart uh you know places the weaker form of decreased defense and ching bada bing that's all the dwarfs so you can see why as a well, there is not much incentive for me really to purchase shards. I, there's, 
there's not really anyone I want. The only guy I want is uh, the Master Butcher for that kind of cool unique passive. And then this guy here, Grizzled, because I think that this move is very good. The blocking debuffs with 60% defense up. Uh, in addition to an AoE decreased attack, I think all of those moves are fantastic. I like those. Um, and I would like this character, and I would love the Legendary just because I think the Legendary looks fantastic. Whoever the art guy is for this game, I am a huge fan of you, okay? I think the art team constantly nails it. Other than the duplicate models, I'm not sure if that's time restraints and they're just put on like, hey, you guys have to have it out, I don't care. Maybe that's the reason why, and you know, I, I don't know, but I will say when they, when they go all out, they nail it, okay? Because this stuff looks amazing. I mean, you really did do a good job. Um, that being said, uh, yeah, these dwarves are kind of unimpressive. Um, I'm not, I'm not terribly uh, bummed out that they're not OP because I really, I really am not a huge fan of power creep situations. Like, if, let's think of the other scenario, okay? Let's say that this legendary here is completely busted and is like the best legendary in the game. Then we're going to be calling it a cash grab, and they're just coming out with a new faction to try to get this to re-roll shards we all for characters we already have to try to get the new. I mean, I can see people saying that, okay? So uh, either way, you're going to have people complaining, but uh, unfortunately, I don't think I'm I'm caring too much about about these dwarves. I think there's a couple I would like, and the legendary I would love the pole, but uh, yeah, they're they're kind of a little lackluster. Okay, now I'm trying to think how to approach this here. Uh, Marvel Strike Force had something similar happen in their game as well, where they offer the certain pack to some people and not to others. So effectively what happened in this game is this gym pack offering I'm showing you here was offered to some people, and it would have been like, you know, $30 worth of gems for 15 bucks or $50 in gems for 25 bucks or whatever. It was half off a gym offer uh, for you, and you could purchase that gym offer three times. Now, the people who received this pack offer are people who either don't spend money at all, and it was like a hook to try to get them in, or people who did spend money but stopped spending recently got this offer as well. Um, that's what's been consistent throughout the people who have messaged me and kind of the clan chat and what I've been able to kind of figure out uh, you know, by triangulating information, that seems to be where the offers go. I am a large spender. I've spent thousands of dollars. I did not get this offer myself. Now, unfortunately, I am not a huge fan of when in-games decide to reward people for not spending money and give them a better deal than the people that do spend money. As a large spender, I take this type of uh, offering to the people who haven't supported their game as a way of saying, hey, we're already taking you for granted. You have already spent a large amount of money. We know you're going to continue to spend a large amount of money. Let's try to get the people who are not spending money. So for me, I would like to give my feedback to Plarium now by saying that as a uh, investor into your game and someone who spends a large amount of money, I personally do not appreciate not having the same opportunity that other people do as well. So that would be my feedback on this. Um, I would like to know in the comments below if some people got this pack offering and some did not, please let me know how much you spend and if you get the pack offering, if you quit spending lately as well in your opinion of this gym pack uh, too. Please be appropriate with your comments and feedback. Um, I am, you know, a moderator of Playerium and everything, but I still do give them my feedback and this is my feedback on this one. I'm not a fan of this decision, so feel free to give them your uh, feedback as well in the comments and I will make sure to pass that feedback uh, along the channels that I'm able to and well thought out criticism um, that's well mannered will be sent along so thank you guys for that um, I would like to also take this opportunity here at the end to say uh, thank you guys very much for continuing to watch my content. The Free to Play uh, series has been going well. We're going to be working on episode four here coming up, and I'm going to be working on some legendary characters, and I'm going to be continuing my legendary review upcoming, so please subscribe and hit the bell uh, if you would like to get notifications for when those legendary reviews are coming out, as those will most likely be the next thing I begin to work on. I love you guys all. Thanks for supporting my content, and have a great day.